This is actually my third time trying to do this review video. <laughs> it's funny. The first, pretty much actually all three times, I got the guy's name wrong. I was like, mm, Josh and Keith started the company and his name isn't Keith, his name is Neil. So Josh and Neil, that was, the, that was one big mistake I made. Then it was so hot one day that my camera kept shutting off and then I forgot what I said and what I didn't say and I left a bunch of stuff out. And then yesterday I had a zit like so monstrous in the corner of my mouth that um, yeah, it was just like the focus of everything. It felt like the scene in Austin Powers where he's like, mole. And uh, yeah, so I had to like abort that. And um, so today is the final time. It's the final time. I feel like I feel like I'm Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes being like, this is the last time, I don't care. <laughs> so here I am doing the final version of the review video for my Woodland Mills HM126 bandsaw sawmill. Hello, my name is Michelle and welcome to my channel. So for those of you that don't know, Woodland Mills is a Canadian owned company established in 2009 by two mechanical engineers named Josh and Neil, <laughs> not Keith. Yeah, I guess they saw a gap in the industry at the time for a sawmill that was both engineered well and cost efficient or affordable, I guess. So they developed the HM126 and they launched that in 2010. And since then they have developed a whole variety of forestry products from stump grinders to wood chippers, ATV trailers, um, winches, uh, the blade sharpener, the tooth setter for the sawmill, and a few other things. I also want to preface this by saying I am not a sawyer. I do not mill lumber to sell it. I am a hobbyist and I have not used any other sawmill other than the one that I've got here. So my experience is limited. And um, while I can tell you a lot about nursing, because I am a registered nurse, I can tell you a lot about nursing or I can tell you a lot about your colon and that you and you, yeah, you and me, and we all should be eating more fiber in our diet. Um, my, like I said, my experience is limited with milling lumber um, other than just what I've learned on my own over the last five years of owning this sawmill. So please take what I say with a grain of salt. I purchased my sawmill in 2018 and I have a friend actually down that lives not too, too far away from me that owns the 2014 model of the HM126. So he had come and helped me uh, set mine up, which was really great. And I will show you at the end too, I will show you how I have things set up on the ground here. Cause I've been asked a lot about how I have it set up. I've been asked a lot about what I think about this sawmill too. So that's why I'm doing this. I love this little sawmill. I mean, it has been so much fun to mill all the wood that I've milled and build the things that we've built. Um, first thing that we built, Steve and I built together, was a secondary carport and that is all lumber that I milled and all from trees from our property. I have also built a little dog chalet and I built this little shed behind me and I built this pole barn shed here and then of course as some of you know I am building a tiny little cabin out at our off-grid property themed the cabin on the cliff dun 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 and someone had said that sounded like a horror movie so I thought that was kind of funny anyway all of these structures are from trees from our property and um, anything that I've milled has been milled on this sawmill so yeah I developed a passion for building things a few years ago and a sawmill was the right fit for me because we own 10 acres here where the sawmill is and it's got a lot of trees on it so it was um seemed like the perfect move for us for me anyway and this is my sawmill um this was my passion my endeavor steve has had nothing to do with this he's never even used the sawmill so uh, this is fully mine i saved up my money and 
my little piggy bank money and, and bought it myself. It's all mine. So there are some bad things with the sawmill as there are with any product out there as there are with probably all of the sawmills on the market. They all have their quirks and whatever. I think the first thing I would want to talk about is um, and probably what put a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth just right off the bat because it was such a struggle but I got sent a motor that was no good and it's not necessarily Woodland Mills' fault. I don't know who does the testing of the motor before it gets packaged out, but that was a problem and that took like three to four weeks of my time. I was here by myself. I had had my friend Bruce help me assemble the sawmill and kind of get it set up on how I have it on the ground here and then I was kind of on my own, which was fine, but I couldn't get the darn thing to run and Steve was gone and it took me quite a while and then finally Bruce came over and confirmed for me that yeah in fact the the uh, engine was no good so they had to send me a new engine and that was great the only problems that the only problem was that I had to swap out the centrifugal clutch and that took a little bit of time um, so I had to take the motor off I'd use the Bobcat because I'd had everything already set up here so I had to get the Bobcat and lift it off and then I had to source out someone to do the swap for me once the new engine came I had to take both engines down to a mechanic I had to pay them to do the swap for me and then I had to package up the old engine and send it back and then reassemble and install this new one and get things going again and that was like about three weeks of my time and maybe around a hundred dollars of my own money so they weren't going to compensate me anything and i was a little bit frustrated at that um and i it took my friend bruce getting on the phone with them who was like yo you know what <laughs> you guys you guys should get send her a pack of blades because uh you should at least do her that because it was such a pain and like three to four weeks delayed working on anything so they did they did send me a package of blades for free along with the motor I think at the same time and then um, yeah so it's been fine ever since I've never had a problem with the motor it's a 9.5 Kohler 9.5 horsepower gas Kohler engine and all good since then um, so then the other thing and the main problem that I've had with the sawmill and the sawmill itself and the design and the engineering is the problem with the belt tensioning. How this gets tensioned is a royal pain in the butt. So we'll go to the back and I will explain to you why. So the way that this belt has to be adjusted is by loosening the engine off this engine mount and sliding it back and forth. And the problem is that it needs, the problem is that the engine needs to stay square and it does not stay square. I would imagine that all of the sawmills that have this basic kind of setup with the engine mounted like this would have that same problem. So it might not have just been Woodland Mills, like the Frontier or the Harbor Freight, I would imagine maybe unless they've been modified would have the same issue so what happens is you have to loosen the bolts and then they say that they have designed this like thing here to tighten and loosen and it's supposed to just move the engine straight but it doesn't like straight and square but it doesn't because of the forces on it there's too many places for it to pivot and move so it still does twist no matter what and I have gone through two belts now because of that so I'm on my third belt uh, and I don't know how much they cost, maybe like 40 bucks each, but, um, it's just been a pain. It's been a pain, honestly. So that's a pain because even with two people, like I have to get Steve to help me. There's no way it can be done with one person. It just doesn't move square. It has to stay square and it just constantly wants to twist. And they've suggested that you take the belt off, get it to where you think it might work tension wise take the belt off and set it square and then put the belt on, tighten the knots and then put the belt on. But I honestly find getting this belt on and off to be so difficult. I can't seem to figure out a way to do it properly that way. So it takes Steve and I both to um, adjust the tension of the belt. So that whole thing is my biggest complaint about the sawmill. 
Um, a couple of like minor little things are like the, the ruler system that it came with. That didn't work. I had set that all up and within an hour of using the sawmill, everything jiggled loose from the vibration of the mill. And I called them about that and they said, well, you can go and get some Loctite, like a liquid thing that you put on the, the nuts so that they don't jiggle off. But to me, that was not really worth it. I just didn't think that, um, I sort of felt like that was something that they should have sorted out before they had launched it, I guess. But I don't know that I would have used it even if it did work um, because I, I'm sort of simple. I just like to use one of these and gauge what my next cut is gonna be. And that works fine for me. So that was not really a big deal. And the other thing <clears throat> that I had a problem with was um, my log dogs breaking. So they just have redesigned them, I guess, and built them better. So my welds had come loose on them and they sent me these for free. So that was great. There's my pros, there's my cons. And so we'll go back to the pros, to some pros now. And this issue of the belt tensioning problem has been solved. So on my particular model of 2018, I think some of them in 2018, it depended on what time of the year they were made. Some of them can be retrofitted with an, uh, an idler pulley system, lever, I'm not sure what the correct term is, that can be fit on here. And this is where the belt would get tension. This thing would slide back and forth to tighten or loosen the belt. That is like an aftermarket thing now that I can purchase. I honestly just haven't done it because I just haven't made the time to do it yet, to be honest. And I haven't really had to mess around with the belt too much in the last several months that I've been using the sawmill both this year and last year. So it just isn't on the top of my list, but I probably will do it at some point because anytime I do have to change the tension, it's a pain. Um, however, all of the sawmills now come with that system to tension the belt. So good job, Woodland Mills. Um, I also know that just based on the website, they have a extension thing that comes out here to help reduce the uh, movement in the blade, like a blade guide system is improved. I know the lubrication tank system is improved and they, can talk, they call it a continuous flow something or other. So that's an improvement. And then the other thing that's a big improvement in my opinion is that you no longer need a torque wrench to tighten the tension of the blade. So this was like $70. I've actually, this is my second one. Uh, so, and it just makes it foolproof. Um, so that is great. That's an also a great upgrade. I think to summarize, I think it's worth it. I paid back in 2018, I paid around $5,500 for my sawmill. I bought an extra extension so that I could mill 16 feet. I bought the barbecue cover. I bought the cant hook. I bought an extra pack of blades and I bought a spare parts kit and that with freight or shipping was $5,500 Canadian. And I still think that they have, they've made so many little improvements on the sawmill uh, and it's still such a reasonable price. Like with any business, you start at ground zero. So whether you're starting a new business or you're starting a new career, or you're going back to school or you're starting say like a YouTube channel, like we all start at the bottom and work our way up. And I think what Woodland Mills is doing is they're proving to their customers that, that they're wanting to make their product better. They've listened to their customers of the problems and they have made corrections. So I'm sure that that belt tensioning system was mentioned constantly and a few other things. So they're showing um, and making this big effort to make the improvements um, to the sawmill rather than just sitting on a product that's, you know, gonna stay stagnant and still promote it and sell it. You know, they're constantly improving it and improving their company and bringing in more good supplies, more tools, more um, forestry equipment. And it's the same two guys that um, have started the company that are still there and their customer service is excellent. 
Anytime you have a question, they get back to you as soon as they can. And that is hard to come by these days. So I do absolutely think it's worth it to buy a Woodland Mills sawmill. I can't say what the other companies are like the Frontier, Harbor Freight, um, Norwood, which I think the Norwood is a higher price point than the Woodland Mills, and the other two companies, the Harbor Freight and the Frontier, I think are a little bit cheaper. Um, I don't know what their specs are. I don't know what their prices are. I don't know what their customer service is like. So I can't really tell you that. You know, the other option is you could buy directly from China. I mean, these sawmills are all made in China. Pretty much like everything is made in China. Like our little mini excavator that we got, we bought directly from China. We've bought a lot of things directly from China, but that's because Steve is comfortable and confident to deal with the importing, to deal with the sales going back and forth with the people and ensuring getting a good product. But that's also not for everyone and you're rolling a bit of a dice by doing it that way. Yeah, great company, uh, really good product coming out in 2022. How could I forget? So this is how I have mine set up just on these like concrete things where you can put either a two by material in or a four by four post. So I just laid those onto the ground and put two by eights all the way along to just lift it off the ground a little bit. And then my friend Bruce, who has the 2014 version of the 126, had brought these big chunks of cedar over for me. So that's how we did that. And then, uh, you know, just secured things with those dumahickeys. And it's been great. Oh, it's getting so hot. Ah, gotta go inside. So I think the only thing that I would change and I might do for my setup here with this is I might close in this area because I always have so much sawdust that builds up in this area and I have no way to get it out other than awkwardly shovel it out. So I'm probably going to throw some boards in along here. That way I can just sweep out the sawdust rather than having to get in there and shovel it out. And then the only other thing is when I have the longer um, log posts, I don't know what they're called, I forget, these things. When I have the longer ones in, I, uh, I don't go down far enough a lot of the time because of these, because of this here. So I could always cut this out a little bit. It will still hit this two by six. Oh, hello. Hello, little cricket. Um, but that's just something, an afterthought too, that I noticed, something I noticed. So sometimes I want to get these to go a little bit lower and they can't. So I have to meet in the middle with this one. But that's about it. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. And I will be getting this up and running in a few days time to mill up some more lumber for my tiny little cabin build. So. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. It's the last time. I don't care. It's going to have to do.